Hi, Richard right here with another Richard's Recipes, and today I'm going to talk about training out the periodic error on your Paramount. I'm a big fan of going unguided for my image runs, and the Paramount and ProTrack make that possible, but only if your mount's periodic error is small enough to go unnoticed. Typically, anything under one arc second per pixel over the course of a worm cycle is sufficient to do this. Remember, even if your remaining periodic error after training is one arc second, that's one arc second in total amplitude. It means the mount is only actually getting ahead or behind perfect tracking by about a half of an arc second. And if you're seeing support shooting at a resolution of less than a half arc second per pixel, you're likely up on a mountain somewhere, and you might benefit from our absolute encoders option. So let's get started. Instead of using the auto guider camera, I like to use the main camera for training the periodic error correction. In order to auto guide with the main camera, you have to enable the advanced camera interface option under advanced preferences. Note I already have it on, but if you have to turn it on for the first time, it will require that you restart your copy of the sky. For best results, select a star that is near declination zero. It does not have to be exactly zero, and don't stress if it's plus or minus in the teens if that's the best star you can find, but you definitely don't want a star up near the pole, be that the north or southern pole. Generally, I also like to select one high up in the sky to make sure refraction effects are not at play or will be negligible during the course of the training exercise, which may take close to an hour. The next prerequisite for proper training of the periodic error is to make sure the camera's position angle has right ascension as a horizontal movement rather than vertical. What this means is that the position angle, or PA, must be close to 0 or 180 degrees. You can determine the position angle by taking an image and using ImageLink, which will report both position angle and the image pixel scale, which you will also need to know later in this process. If your image train has a rotator, simply rotate the camera to 0 degrees. But if not, you'll have to manually rotate the camera to get as close to either 0 or 180 degrees as possible. Note, I've already taken care to get mine at 180 degrees. As you'll soon see, both 0 and 180 work equally well, as long as we take this into account when loading the guiding log. We'll get to that soon enough. Note too that when moving the camera mechanically, it may require that you refocus as well. To measure your mount's periodic error, we'll pretend to auto-guide for at least a couple of worm gear cycles. By pretend, what I mean is that after calibrating the main imager, we'll log an auto-guiding session for about 20 minutes with the actual mount correction turned off. If you've never guided with the main imager before, make sure under Setup you change the guiding type to Direct Guide for your paramount. Now it's time to start our auto-guiding log. First, make sure the checkbox for log auto guiding is turned on. I also like to increase the size of my track box size to at least 64 by 64 to make sure the guide star does not drift out during the 20 minutes or so I'll be logging the star's position. We also need to go into BISC TCS Utilities to make sure PEC corrections are turned off during this logging session. Now we can start an actual guiding run. Here, I've pre-selected an isolated star and created a subframe around it. Double-click the star to specify that that's the star you want to use for the guiding log. It is essential that you remember to go back into the auto guider setup and turn off the corrections. We want to record how the star is drifting and we certainly do not want to be making any actual mount corrections during this process. Now we can finally start to auto guide. Display the log if you want, but honestly I think it drives most people crazy trying to interpret what's going on. Please just ignore it. And just let it run for about 20 minutes. Okay, after we've collected the tracking data, we go into BISC TCS to load the tracking log and do a curve fit. Put in the image scale, you remember what that was from the image link, right? Write it down if you need to. Also, make sure you have the correct mount selected. Now, click the Open Tracking Log button and select the Auto Guider log that you had just created. Now, 
Once loaded, click Fit. You should see a somewhat rough fit of the tracking data to the computed periodic error. You can see from my example here that the error goes from positive 2.3 to negative 2.7 arc seconds, which gives me a peak-to-peak -peak error of 5 arc seconds, well within spec for my MX+. Now it's important to note the checkbox for data was collected when telescope was pointing west. This can get you into trouble, but it's pretty simple really. Just choose a star high up, but clearly to one side of the meridian or the other. If you perform a slew to that location with your paramount, note whether this star is east or west of the meridian. In my case, I'm on the eastern side, so I'm going to leave this box unchecked. Now, the tricky thing is, my position angle was not 0 degrees, but actually 180 degrees. Remember when I did the image link? This means I'm about to load the error correction curve backwards or upside down. Stay tuned to see what this does and how easy it is to fix. When you have a good fit ready to go, click the Save to Mount button and be sure to enable PEC corrections by clicking the Apply PEC checkbox at the upper left. Now that the periodic error curve is loaded into the mount, we want to repeat the process again just to see if the error has gone down sufficiently. So we simply use the same star we were using before and now create a new auto guiding log. A really good practice is to go back and rename the auto guider log we used to train the periodic error in the first place. This way, if we need to go back and find it again later, we can easily do so. Okay, so after logging for another 20 minutes or so, we have our second tracking log which we are going to use for verification. Clear the old curve, and no, this does not erase the curve loaded into the mount, and load the new guider log. Leaving the image scale alone, click Fit. Well, isn't this interesting? My new corrected periodic error is actually just over 10 arc seconds peak to peak. That means it's twice what it was before we applied the correction. If you put your thinking cap on, you might figure out that the curve was applied, literally, upside down because our camera's position angle was at 180 degrees instead of zero. Simply go back to the original auto guiding log we collected before and this time I will check the data was collected while pointing west checkbox. After all, if you turn a map upside down, east and west change sides, don't they? Now we just click fit and resave the curve back to the mount, this time with the proper orientation. Just for a sanity check, let's not assume all is well, and I will do another auto guiding log this time with the correction curve inverted, and load that and see how we've done. Okay, some time has passed. Let's stop auto guiding and let's load our current auto guiding log. Clear the graph. All that does is get rid of it visually again. And let's open it. I told you it would be useful to rename that one file so we could find it again. And this time when we click fit, we see ah, now our peak to peak is 0.9 arc seconds, well under an arc second, plus uh, 0.5 arc seconds down to negative 0.4 on the bottom side. And this is quite, quite good. I'm ready to go and do some unguided imaging now. Hooray!